Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about what we're going to do in our 70s and 80s and we are 50 and 51 currently. It's 2024 and we get this question a lot of what are we going to do later on? Yeah, I think we get this because it stems out of people being a little bit afraid for us that we've <laughs> left uh, America, we've left our home base, and how are we going to ever recover from that? And so we wanted to address that today because we have given it a lot of thought, and there's some pretty easy answers, and it's also some answers that maybe most people have never thought about that have occurred to us <clears throat> as we've been doing this. And the first part of this is that if you give up your home base, which we are from Atlanta, Georgia, we had a 3,000 square foot house there that we had with our kids. They went off to college, went off to their own life. So we sold the house and gave up that base. We were gonna be downsizing anyway. So once we sold it, we just decided uh, to travel. But if you give up that home base, you can get it back as quickly as you left it. Uh, and you'll have the option to go back to the same place you left or to pick a totally new one. That's right. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a lot, like you said, you touched on it, a lot of fear um, behind the thought process of unloading everything and then having nothing sort of left to come back to. And I think that's where this question, I think, stems out of a lot is people are really concerned, like, well, you, you don't have anything left to come back for. Like, what are you going to do when you got kids here? And um, you know, I, I think that's, that's what we're kind of the angle we're coming at it from. Yeah. And so to give you an idea, you know, and, and you know, this, if you think about it is that we had our kids left college and needed to get an apartment. Most parents or a lot of parents co-sign on that first apartment. We actually flew back to the U S and went apartment hunting with one of our kids, co-signed on that apartment, took a day to look at apartments. Next day we had a lease for them. And that's the same thing we could do for ourselves. We could fly back in two or three days from now and have a lease before the end of the week was up. So there really is no problem with uh, not having a base because we could even go right back to the same area that we lived in. All of our friends are still there. We still keep up with them on social media. We could slide exactly right back into the same life. We could pick a totally new area. We could go live by some other family members that we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, so there really just isn't a problem with that. You could also buy a house, or if you needed to, you could go back into a, a long-term care facility. You just do still have all of those same options that you had before uh, when you actually sold your house the first time. Yeah, I think that's, that's the cool thing is that there are so many options of things that you can do. You don't have, you know, the house, the car, and all that stuff, but you do have a lot of options. You do have flexibility. <laughs> a ton of flexibility. Yeah. And like you said, we could go back to the same place where we were, or we could just be like, oh, this place looks really amazing. Let's go there. I mean, we've been everywhere in the U.S., had all 50 states. We know what they're all like. What if we just are like, oh, this place was really beautiful. Loved it when we were there. Maybe we should move there. Look for a place there. And like you said, in a few days, at the most, a week, we could be into an apartment with no problem. Yeah, we've always wanted to spend time in San Diego uh, because of the weather. And, you know, now we have a child in California, so that we could just go do that if we wanted. Uh, there, If we just stayed in our house in Atlanta, where you just kind of tied down there and until you sell that house again, you really can't leave. But the thing I want to point out about this lifestyle is that if you're doing your budgeting correctly, you're actually going to be saving money by traveling over living in the United States. Now, we have a ton of videos on this channel. If you wanna go look back and search for them, I can try to link them also, but how much cheaper it is to travel than it is to live in the US. You'll be shocked if you see how much it is. Now, we're spending on average $4,000 a month. We were spending well over $4,000 a month in the US to live what I would call a lesser lifestyle. So if you have a $6,000 pension that you're already getting and you're spending that $6,000 pension in the U.S. pretty much using all of it, you could live on three or 4000 overseas and pocket $2,000 of your pension money 
and just kind of build that up for later in life. So the traveling is not a detriment. It is actually a financial benefit. Exactly. It's, uh, it really enhances uh, your life at that point too because you get to do and see so much and this is actually we've talked about this before on other videos on the channel it's like you know the meatiest part of your life when you're in this age range you have you know your health your finances and everything is kind of settled at this point it's the perfect time to go and explore the world and just see what's out there now I think the most overlooked part of this and the part that we didn't really realize until we started doing this and that we want to share with you, people don't think about it, is that if you travel and you go travel the world in your 50s or your 60s, it does open the door for the possibility of you living out the rest of your life in another country. Now most people who are in their 70s or 80s would not just, who spent their whole life in America, would not just wake up one day and say, you know what, I think I'm going to move to Thailand, or I'm going to move to Mexico or Colombia. That's just not something that would ever cross their mind because they would have no basis, no understanding of how possible it was, what it would be like, how amazing it would be. But if you've spent time in your 50s and your 60s living for two to three, four months at a time in some of these countries and talking to people who are in their 70s and 80s doing it, you would have a sense and you would get that idea that this is something that's possible. Now, one of the things we love in Thailand is uh, we meet so many retirees that are in their 70s or 80s. Now, a lot of them are Australians. Now, we know we have some Australian viewers, so hats off to you guys. But the Australians have figured this out. They're all over the place in Thailand, the 70-year-olds, <laughs> the 80-year-olds, and they're just living their best life because they've realized this is totally possible, but if they hadn't gone there earlier in life, they wouldn't realize that that was something they could do. Yeah, and I think the really even cooler thing is that the money that you would have spent on, say, you know, being in a care facility in the U.S. is going to go so much farther for you in some of these places like Thailand that, my goodness, you could get elite care <laughs> in some of these other countries for just a fraction of what you would be paying for at mm -hmm. home. It's it's really just phenomenal. And I think that's really the the meaty part of this whole thing is that if you're out here traveling and seeing what the situation is in these countries, you really get a feel for, you know, what it's like for when you're older too. You'll encounter people of all different ages and see what it's like for them, what's available, and you will be literally blown away by what is available to you in a lot of places outside of the U.S. Yeah, we were sitting in a resort pool this last year uh, in Thailand and talking to some people. People are, people are friendly, you know. They, they can see, do you speak English? They're going to come up. So Australians always talk to us. And so we say, well, what are you, what are you doing uh, here? And they're like, well, we just bought a, a condo. We just bought one of these condos. I think they paid $63,000 for the condo. They were just going to live there. And uh, I said, well, what about Australia? They said, can go back if we want to but we have no need to this is where we decided we want to just live out our life their kids come and visit them there and and everything is just fine so that's a decision that you can only make if you've tried it out extensively and we've already found through our travels two or three places that we would be happy doing that now that doesn't mean we will decide to do that that's going to depend on a lot of factors but we've given ourselves that option so now we have the option of going back to the U.S., going to Thailand, going to Mexico, going to Colombia, going any of these places. Whereas before we did this, we only had the choice of staying in the U.S. because that's all we knew. That's the only thing that would have made any sense at all mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, and not only that, but you have multiple options in each of these places including the U.S., just like you have multiple options there of living on your own or, you know, buying a house, buying a condo, living in a facility, whatever. You have all of those same options in these other places and more 
that you don't you couldn't even think about affording in the US you have more options in these places um, that are incredibly affordable so the natural progression of the lifestyle for people is generally speaking you know buy a large home get your dream home with your family and eventually you're gonna downsize that and then eventually you're gonna go into some type of assisted living type situation all that we've done in this lifestyle is replace the downsize section with travel. And in doing so, we've given ourselves more options, both financially and geographically, for that last stage of life, which is going to benefit us greatly. So a lot of people look at what we've done and they, they, they look at it from the sense of, oh, you've lost your home base. But really, we haven't lost anything. We've kept our home base we could go back to that as much as we as quickly as we wanted but we've gained a whole wealth of of opportunities that we could determine now we don't know what we're going to do we we really have no idea and that's the great thing time will tell life will tell <laughs> life will help us make that decision but we know for a fact that we have way more choices now than we did five or six years ago when we thought about this question. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing about it is that uh, we didn't essentially skip the downsize section. We just took it on a field trip around the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we downsized into hotel rooms and Airbnbs and, you know, uh, small apartments and, and whatnot. Yeah, we downsized considerably from where we were, but it's on the road. We took it on the road and we're testing it out everywhere that we go. And like you said, we don't know what our situation will be down the road. And of course, you know, as we're 50 and 51, like I said earlier, you know, obviously we don't have grandkids yet. We don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know what anything is going to look like. So we just kind of play it by ear. It doesn't have to be planned out, but we do have some options not some a lot of options a lot of options <laughs> tons of options so that's just what we wanted to share with you today to address if that's a fear that's holding you back don't let that be because when you do something like what we're doing it actually opens up tons of doors we've met so many people doing so many things that we've never thought of and they said well we could do that too yeah that is a good idea <laughs> uh so it's just going to open up possibilities for you which really is what you're after. You don't want to get kind of boxed in. Uh, we've seen a lot of people that do get boxed in and then they become unhappy with that box that they're in. So go ahead and look what's out there. It's a big world and there's a ton of opportunities in it. Yeah, guys, I know you've got a questions brewing. Leave those down in the comments. We can have a conversation uh, in the comments section. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like and we will see you next time.